She died in training two years ago, but Sarah Burke still helped shape these Olympics. Her work led the way for new freestyle skiing events at Sochi, and athletes from around the world have worn stickers on their helmets to remember and honor her. But today, the IOC explicitly clamped down on the practice. The rules prohibit wearing messages of any kind during competition. But as Nick Purden explains, Burke's presence is in the air at Sochi wherever there are skis and a half pipe. I think it'll be a, a major Sarah vibe going on around the Olympics, absolutely. She'll be in, in everyone's, everyone's hearts there. I would not change a single thing she ever did. I wouldn't change a hair on her head. No, she lived her life fully and truthfully and with passion, and, and that is amazing. Sarah Burke was a pioneer. On skis, she did things that made the birds take notice. Sarah Burke was a crusader. She fought to have a men's half pipe recognized as a sport. She was a dreamer, too. Even as a kid, she wanted to ski in the Olympics. But Sarah's life was cut short. She died doing what she loved. Sarah's mom, Jan Phelan, still lives and does her art a few blocks away from her daughter's old house in Squamish, BC. It's been two years since Sarah died, and with the Olympics upon us, Jan wants to talk about her daughter's legacy and how Sarah was a fighter from the very beginning. She was only about maybe three, and I was in the kitchen, and I heard this bump, 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 crash. And I, I knew she had fallen down the stairs. Uh, and I was just hoping that she hadn't broken too many bones. And she, I, I ran into the living room, and I, and I stood there and looked at her as she was picking herself up. And she looked up, and she said, I meant to do that. And I saw it going, okay, she's taken several somersaults down the stairs, and, and there she is, but she's not going to let it, she's not going to cry, she's not going to let it defeat her, she's going to own it. Sarah was born into a family of skiers, and it wasn't long before she was bumping down the slopes with her never give up attitude. Then as a teenager, when Sarah took up halfpipe, she looked around and realized she was the only woman in the sport. But there were 23 senior men. So she said, OK, I'll, I'll compete against the senior men. And so she came fourth uh, out of this <laughs> and landed, the, I think, the first 1080 in a competition. So out of all of these men, who many of whom are on, on the World Cup circuit, uh, Sarah, this little, little kid, came fourth. So isn't that, isn't that something? <laughs> That's how Sarah first put women's halfpipe on the map. But she didn't stop there. She wrote emails to the X Games, asking them why women couldn't have their own event. She tracked down officials and demanded women be given a chance. For years, she was turned down. She'd be crying in her goggles and venting her frustration. And then she'd say, OK, I'm going to go back and talk to them again. And I could just imagine the tears kind of filling up her goggles because <laughs> she was so mad. Um, because she'd worked so hard at it. Sarah loved the mountains. She moved to BC and married Rory Bushfield, a daredevil skier in his own right. <laughs> and so, yeah, I've had some moments up here with Sarah where <laughs> it was just awesome, awesome times to see her. She really was fearless, you know, she would go for it. Why do you smile when you talk about it? I'm not really sad about it, you know. It's been two years since Sarah passed, and, and I've gone through some super sad times, but everything about Sarah just, you know, it's easy to smile about. Rory remembers Sarah the pioneer. At the X Games, still without an event to compete in, she did tricks in the half pipe before the men's competition to warm up the judges. So they would put Sarah in as the forerunner. And she would kill it. Her, she'd score higher than some of the guys, you know, a lot of the guys in her forerun. And so they started, like, allowing girls. She got, it was a huge progression. She got, she went from nothing to, to getting X Games equal prize money for men and women. It's a huge, huge milestone. She was fighting for, for a pretty 
you know, she was fighting for a cause that was, you know, a lot of people couldn't see that. And she did it with grace and with class and pushed herself in the right places, you know, skied half pipe like a champion. Like, did so many first tricks for women that had never been done, you know, and continued to push and continued to push. The Cork 720, Sarah Burke sets the new standard. Finally, in 2005, Sarah broke through. Women's half pipe got a spot in the world championships. Sarah won gold and kept pushing. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for the Olympics. We're only going to get better, and I think uh, I'm really hoping to get it in there. So two Canadians. Sarah would never make it to the Olympics. On January 19th, 2012, she died after a crash while training in the half pipe. Her death was mourned by family, friends, and skiers all over the world. But Sarah won her fight. She got her sport into the Olympics. In Sochi, when the women drop into the half pipe for the first time, Sarah's dream will have come true. I mean, it's thanks to Sarah that all these guys are gonna be there, so. And among other things, but, but mainly, yeah, and her hard work and, and, and her fearlessness. And so yeah, she's gonna be a huge part of the Olympics and be in everyone's hearts there, for sure. If you'd asked me, um, before this happened, what the worst thing in my life would be. It would be to lose a child, to lose Sarah. Um, I now know that there is one thing worse, and that would be to never have had her at all, right? So what that, that tells me is that to look at all these wonderful things that she did accomplish and, and to enjoy them, uh, let them bring you happiness. And so, it makes sense that Jan will make the trip to Sochi, stand in the half pipe and witness her daughter's legacy. I know Sarah will be there with me. Um, and it's her dream, it's her dream come true. And it's what she worked for in her life. And I do believe she will, she will be there. Her spirit will be there. Nick Purden, CBC News, Squamish, British Columbia. If you want to learn more about the mark that Sarah Burke made, family and friends shared their stories with the Fifth Estate shortly after her death. You can see the full documentary, Fearless, at cbc.ca slash fifth. As the eyes of the world focus on Sochi, we're taking...